Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. If you've watched my channel, you might remember my skater, Shirley. Hi, my name is Shirley. I first introduced her to you when she and my other skater, Monica, took their first moves in the field or skating skills test. Last summer, Shirley has been skating for about two years now. She started at the age of 17. Last fall, Shirley started her first year of college and she took a break from skating, but she was back at the ring when she came home this summer. Shirley set a goal to pass her second test, preliminary moves in the field or skating skills. This this summer. She met that goal. I've actually been sitting on this for a while. In the interest of full transparency, it was a bit of a challenge. Shirley hadn't skated while she was in school. A lot goes on your first year of college. It had been close to a year since Shirley skated when she picked it back up again this May. She attempted this test twice over the summer. We knew the first one would be a stretch because she had spent only a month preparing. She did pass on the second try, which we filmed the day she was actually leaving to go back to college. Shirley and most skaters have little difficulty passing pre-preliminary. The second test, preliminary, is much more challenging. After the first test, the standards are higher. The judges expect higher quality execution. The expectations at all levels are pretty straightforward. The patterns are clear. The focus points are clear as well. The execution of each pattern should be consistent from skater to skater as the judges look for that consistency. Consistency allows them to better measure the quality of your skating. When you take your preliminary moves or skating skills test, you must start to get into the ice with good knee action. You must demonstrate power. As a PSA rated coach in moves or skating skills, I know how big of a deal power is for this test. This test has six moves. Three of the six moves have power as the focus point. You must show the judges you have power. power. It's not likely that you're going to pass this test if you cannot demonstrate the power they are looking for. Power is the ability to accelerate with speed and steadiness. Judges are specifically looking to see that from you. You don't want to give the appearance of being just on top or skimming the ice. Many of the moves require strong knee bend to achieve that power and skate on deep edges. At the preliminary level, backward crossovers with the second under push are developed, as well as the ability to control rotations with smaller lobes and increasing power. There there's also an expectation of stronger checking development. More awareness of an axis. If you're new to moves in the field or skating skills, I have a whole bunch of videos that can help you. There's a link to that playlist in the description down below. In July of 2023, moves in the field will be called skating skills. I may go back and forth between calling them moves and skating skills. Know that I'm talking about the exact same thing. This testing system allows one skill to build upon another and provides the building blocks for balance, use of the blade, control of body rotation or checking ability, body line to full extension, increasing speed and power, and accuracy of placement of patterns. You must strive to achieve the highest quality skating you're capable of at each level. This will show the judges that you are well prepared to take on the challenge of the next level. As you progress from one level to another, Another, you will not simply be learning a new set of patterns. You will also be expected to raise the standard of your skating. You must improve the quality of your skating. Paying attention to edge quality, extension, quickness, power, continuous flow, turn execution, and of course, posture, control, speed, and presentation. As you continue to progress, you need to be aware of all the refinements that are expected, such as establishing good posture, holding your head up, holding your arms gracefully, pushing correctly, pointing your toe, and extending your free leg. These details can make you appear more advanced 
and ready for the next level. Paying attention to these details goes a long way to separate you from other skaters. I've included chapters in this video just in case you want to skip around to specific moves. And I'm going to post Shirley's entire test without my commentary at the end of the video. At this time code, I'm going to put it somewhere up here. So if you don't want to hear me break down all the moves, you can skip to that time code. But I really hope you don't skip because my commentary can really help you as you prepare for your own preliminary test. So preliminary move skating skills. This is a standard track test. You must be 21 or older to test as an adult. This can be a bit confusing and learn to skate. Most rinks will put you into the adult level at around age 15. You can compete as an adult at 18, young adults, but still. However, you cannot test as an adult in the adult track until you're 21 plus. Shirley is not 21 yet, so she still has to test standard track. This test purpose is to continue encouraging beginning skaters to learn the fundamentals of ice skating. You must demonstrate knowledge of the steps and a good sense of power, which is speed plus flow. Attention should be given to the depth of edges and proper curvature of the lobes. At this level, the general test standard should be to demonstrate a sense of axis and a knowledge of steps, edges, patterns, and body extension. You should also demonstrate an ability to maintain upright carriage in your posture while bending and rising in your skating knee. The proper alignment of the hips, back, arms, and shoulders, and head over the skate. Unless the move requires a variation, such as we see in a spiral. Typically, your back should be straight with the spine and head perpendicular to the surface of the ice. The arms should be extended from the shoulders, level and relaxed. The free leg should be straight and slightly turned out from the free hip to the free toe. Preliminary pattern number one, forward and backward crossovers. This move demonstrates that you can stroke powerful forward and backward crossovers while accelerating with proper skating technique. Power is the focus of this move. It is what the judges want to see. Power is the creation and maintenance of speed and flow without visible effort. For this move specifically, it is the ability to accelerate with proper skating technique. Power is developed by a continuous rise and fall of the skating knee and the pressure of the edge against the ice. You should demonstrate the ability to exert equal pressure on both right and left Feet. End products of power are velocity, speed or pace, flow across the ice, and acceleration. Even though the primary focus of this move is power, you should always try to be aware of your presentation. Don't just try to show the judges that you have power at the expense of overall presentation. Remember, the line of your arms, posture, extension, and carriage all contribute to what you are presenting to the judges. A quick note to adults that are 21 and over. This move appears on your first test, adult pre-bronze, as the final move. This move may start in either direction on either foot. Forward crossovers must be skated first before the backward crossover. The pattern may be skated anywhere on the ice. It is common to see this placed as Shirley is doing down at the end hockey circles. Sometimes a skater, like my skater Caitlin did, will center it in the middle of the rink. Four to six crossovers per circle ensure that you're skating the correct number of crossovers. At least four and no more than six. The four circles should be equal in size. Get into the ice and skate each edge on a well-bent knee with good free leg extension at the end of each stroke. There can sometimes be a tendency for skaters to cross over with their free foot turned out Remember, the best forward crossovers always lead with the toe first, not the heel. It's best to aim your toe at the center of the circle. For the backward crossovers, reach into the circle with your inside leg over your hip and get your second push underneath you. This will help you gain momentum as you shift your body weight back to your outside foot. 
you're gonna be using the blade correctly if you do it that way. Standards and expectations, good posture, ability to increase power, correct blade use throughout the push, stroked, not stepped. Remember crossovers have two pushes. We also wanna start to see some knee bend and rise. The transitions are critical. One foot transitions between the two forward circles are expected. The transition between the two forward circles into the two backward circles is a swing roll to a change of edge into an open mohawk or c-step common errors include toe pushing or incorrect use of the blade forward crossovers can be weaker than the backward ones insufficient ability to create power and poor posture also up and down motion throughout the crossovers while we want to see the knees bend and rise the up and down motion indicates a lack of smoothness judges are looking to qualify and observe your smoothness and efficiency by watching your head and arms against the horizon or the top of the dasher boards we also sometimes see skaters with crossovers that include only one push and scratchy back crossovers because you're too far forward on your blade. You want your weight on the middle front of the blade. If you keep your weight there, you'll have a much easier time with your backward crossovers because your blade and not your toe pick will be in contact with the ice. You are permitted up to seven introductory steps that are optional. Let's look at Shirley's forward and backward crossover. In Shirley's first attempt on this test, she received a negative one because the judge wanted to see more power. The marks range from negative three to positive three. On this attempt that passed, the judge checked off the ability to increase power, stroked, not stepped, starting to see knee bend and rise, good posture and transition. Shirley received a zero on this move. Some things that we worked on, you can work on these too if you have difficulty demonstrating that you have power. For forward crossovers, get deep into your knees before you stroke. This will give you a more powerful push. Hold your feet together tightly on the cross. Stay down on your outside knee throughout the second push and get a nice big swing before your mohawk. That swing will help propel you forward, increasing your speed, showing that you have power and can complete a mohawk with power. For backward crossovers, again, get deeper into your knees and stay off that toe pick. Keep your weight on the middle front of the blade, watching your posture. For the first push, get that outside foot more in front than beside you. A good way to think about this is to push away from you. Stay down in your knees throughout the second push so that your body does not go up and down. Remember, the judges are looking for that, watching your body against the boards to see if your head is bobbing up and down. You want to avoid that. Preliminary pattern two, consecutive outside and inside spirals. The focus here is on extension and edge quality. You perform right foot and left foot spirals. The outside edge spirals are skated for the first length of the ice. Forward crossovers may be utilized but are not required around the end of the rink. Forward inside edge spirals are skated for the second length of the rink. The number of spirals depends on the rink size and the skater's strength. However, a minimum of four spirals down each rink's length must be skated. Most skaters will perform five spirals on each side of the ice. The extended leg in the spiral should be held at hip level or higher. The final extended position should be controlled achieving the maximum length of all body line. Remember, an extended free leg is not only beautiful, but it's also useful for balance.
edge quality is initiated through proper body alignment over the skating foot, creating a stable arc that travels uninterrupted until a required transition occurs. Depth of edge refers to the acuteness or quality of the arc. It's created by your body lean and the blade's angle. Good edge quality results in confident, sure, and controlled movement. For this move specifically, edge quality means your ability to sustain, glide, and control edges with proper transitions, depth of lobe, and curvature. This move is intended to develop flexibility in both legs. The move challenges you to demonstrate a command of forward spirals on controlled edges. These skills will help enhance the quality of your camel spin positions and more advanced spiral sequences. The forward, outside, and inside spirals will use the continuous axis as their primary format. The basic forward edges are the foundation for the placement of the blade on the ice and the direction each spiral will travel. You may briefly glide on two feet to achieve your balance before stepping onto the new arc. Common errors, not stepping onto the axis, not arching your back, hold your head up and don't drop your arms or dangle them. Losing control after the spiral. The free leg is too low. It has to be at your hip level or higher. Spirals aren't held long enough. The incorrect shape of lobes. Patterns can drift if you lack bilateral symmetry. Weaker inside edge spirals. Toe pushing. Coming out of the spiral too late. That causes you to start the next spiral into the next lobe. Keeping your knee bent. You want to rise up in your skating knee to create pressure against the ice and maintain momentum. Plus, it just looks a lot nicer if your skating knee is straight. The standards and expectations are the same for males and females. That means that boys and men need to get that leg up at their hip level or higher, which can often be a challenge. Let's look at Shirley Spirals. Notice Shirley prefers a more upright position in her spiral. She's not doing a dive down as many skaters do. If you do that, make sure that you're arching your back. The judge noted that Shirley had strong arch back, which is necessary when performing spirals in a more upright position. She received a check on extensions and check plus for edge quality. Shirley received a mark of plus one on this move. On her first attempt, a different judge gave her a zero. Some things that we worked on for this second attempt included getting her left leg slightly higher and being more consistent bilaterally, making the two foot transition quicker and smoother, placing her foot down more quietly, more rise in her skating knee. Preliminary pattern three, forward power three turn. The purpose of this move is to execute forward outside three turns with greater velocity and shift your body weight to create power. This move teaches you to do forward outside three turns in a more powerful free skating step. The primary focus here, no surprise, is power. This is your ability to accelerate with proper skating technique. Specifically, the judges are looking to see how well you can push from one edge to the next. You execute a forward outside three turn to a balanced position, followed by a backward crossover. 
three to six sets of turns will be skated depending upon the length of the ice. You may begin this move with either right or left foot three turn. Backward crossovers around the end of the arena are optional. You have four sources of power in this move. The first one is the push to the forward outside edge. The next source of power is your balance position with a weight shift. Be sure to demonstrate that you can use the power gained from shifting your weight onto a wide step and back to the next edge. The judges wanna see that from you, so show it to them. I tell my skaters to extend their free leg after the three turn and leave it extended. As you shift your weight simultaneously, place your extended free foot down on an inside edge, aiming straight towards the wall for a brief moment before shifting your weight to the other side for your crossover. Think of this the same way you think of any edge. You want to be perpendicular to the axis as you begin your back inside edge with the wide step for good weight transfer to a powerful backward inside edge. A wide step is required here. You need that shift with a big wide step. The wider, the better. Don't worry about neat feet. You're not gonna be able to get neat feet and power on this move. The crossover lobe is supposed to be bigger than the three turn lobe. You're not gonna be able to form the correct size lobes without that wide step. You need that massive shift of weight to get the power from the push. Neat feet are great, but that's not what we're looking for here. The expectations and the patterns are pretty straightforward. Do not try to reinvent them. You need the wide step to step on the back inside edge. I'm all for neat feet, but this is one of those times that having neat feet will not work in your favor. Your next power source are your two pushes in your crossover. Stay down in your knees and into the ice for each push. One of my younger skaters actually calls this <laughs> the butt things because you stay down in your knees most of this move. She's not wrong, it's just a weird, weird term. You're only rising up after the crossover to perform the three turns. You may start this move on either the right or left foot. Common errors, stepping onto the incorrect edge after the three turn. This would be by trying to keep those feet neat or stepping onto an outside edge, following the wide step. Inability to increase power from the back inside edge, which can be caused by insufficient knee bend. Rising up after the wide step. Remember, you wanna stay down and into the ice the entire time on that crossover lobe. Uneven timing. Sometimes we see the three turn lobe too large. This is gonna impact your timing. Or rising up too quickly for the three turn. Make you have to turn too early, which also impacts your timing. Noisy or scratchy backward crossovers, indicating that you're too far forward on the blade and you're scraping that toe pick. You want to be on the middle front of your blade in backward crossovers, not your toe pick. You can sometimes become too far forward due to a lack of control of the free leg or lifting it too high, which can cause your body to tip forward. This leads me to poor posture. Watch your posture. Introductory steps are optional. I suggest skating four strong strokes to build momentum before you get to the long axis on the ice. Then follow the strokes with a hockey glide around the corner to the axis and push forward from a T position into your first three turn. Now let's look at Shirley's.
The judge noted a zero plus, which I take it to mean it was slightly above the standard. That is a significant improvement for Shirley as the judge for her first test attempt said she needed more power and marked that first test as a negative one. We worked really hard using the method that I described to bring her mark up. So bravo, Shirley. Preliminary pattern four alternating three turns. The primary focus is on edge quality, the ability to sustain glide and control edges with proper transitions, lobe depth and curvature. This move aims to teach the body mechanics of three turns, the shoulders against hips and rocking on the blade that produces crisp controlled three turns. Starting from a standing position, you will alternate forward outside three turns for the width of the ice surface. Then you perform the forward inside alternating three turns for the second width of the ice surface. The size of the ice surface and your strength will determine how many three turns you skate. We usually see four to six outside, followed by four to six inside. <laughs> Test standards and expectations. Equal depth of lobes, controlled edges, with proper transitions during the backward to forward action, which is actually a Choctaw, or sometimes called an S-step. If a Choctaw or S-step is new to you, it's a step that involves a change of foot, change of edge, and change of low. Choctaws are sometimes called the two foot equivalent of rockers and counters, similar to how a mohawk step or C-step is the two foot equivalent of three turns and brackets. If you're interested in learning more about steps and turns, I have a whole entire video dedicated to that. There's a link to it in the description down below. Anyway, your hips must remain underneath your shoulders. Each push off to begin a new lobe must be perpendicular or close to the axis. Pattern placement is a factor in creating correct three turns. Stepping forward diagonally or doing three turns before the top of each arc will result in a loss of control. Remember to keep your foot perpendicular to the axis for each push. This is the same thing you would do when you're performing the basic consecutive edges. This creates a quality edge, which makes a quality turn. After stepping forward, it is vital to establish balance and control of the free side of the body before rotating for the three turns. Extra credit is sometimes awarded for an extended free leg and for demonstrating good control after each transition. There are no introductory steps permitted on this move. Let's look at Shirley's. The judge marked this as a plus one that indicates it is above the passing standard. He also noted stable exits. In Shirley's first attempt, she received a zero. So she's really improved on this move. Next is the circle eight. You will push from a standing start onto a forward outside edge and complete one forward outside figure eight. Upon returning to the center after the second circle, you will perform a forward inside figure eight by pushing onto a forward inside edge, repeating the previously skated circle. The circles should be equal in size with each circle approximately three times your height, edge quality, and continuous flow are the two focuses of this move. We've already discussed edge quality. Continuous flow refers to your ability to maintain a consistent, undisturbed running edge across the ice. Flow does not necessarily relate to your speed. It's sometimes best recognized when you begin to slow down. The pattern may be skated using hockey lines or circles. You must have body control during the positions and a sense of organization in technical repetition with proper blade use for each 
push perpendicular to the long axis. Bend your knees before each push. Move your arms and free leg close to the body. Return to approximate center. You must do the outside edges first and then the inside edges. Always switch feet for each circle. Common errors, toe pushing, wide stepping onto the pushes. This is the time for neat feet, not stepping on the axis. Lack of awareness of short and long axis. Having the concept of center. Unequal circle size, sub curves on the circle. Not being able to maintain the edge glide all the way around the circle. Here's Shirley's circle eight. Shirley executed this very well. The judge noted her stable carriage and marked her with a plus one. On her first test attempt, she received a mark of zero. So Shirley improved on this move as well. Alternating backward crossovers to backward outside edges. You perform alternating backward crossovers to backward outside edges in consecutive half circles. You will only skate down one side of the ice. Four or five lobes should be skated. This move is intended to help you sustain good landing positions and train your body to achieve strength and balance symmetrically. The focus is again on power and extension. Power is not speed. Skating fast does not in and of itself indicate that you have power. You need to skate the pattern correctly with control. This is a relatively easy move, but it requires long flowing edges with good speed, posture, ice coverage, and control during sustained extensions, which is not so easy. Because it's considered easy, the judges expect to see very high quality skating on this move. The pattern size may depend on the size of the skater. However, the pattern will not usually cross the center of the ice surface. Common errors include poor flow and extension, unequal lobes, poor posture, inability to extend equally with both legs. Extra credit is sometimes given when the pattern is on larger lobes with proper curvature. A maximum of seven optional introductory steps are permitted. The introductory steps I recommend are skating down the hockey goal line, stroke left, right, left, right forward inside mohawk to the first right back outside edge of the move. Let's look at Shirley's alternating back crossovers to backward outside edges. The judge marked this move as a zero, indicating that Shirley met the standard. That's an improvement over her first test, where she received a negative one on this move. Shirley's cumulative mark was plus three, which is above the passing standard. On her first attempt, she received a negative three. That's a significant improvement. I could have easily not brought up the fact that Shirley had to take this test twice. I honestly feel that there's so much that you can learn from getting a retry. I know it can be disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. Skating is ultimately subjective and each judge will mark things differently. There is always something that can be improved at every level. We used Shirley's retry as an incentive to improve on her next attempt, and she did. Her higher quality of skating will now better prepare her for her next test, pre-juvenile. Overall, I'm thrilled with Shirley's progress and her test results. Congratulations, Shirley. Thank you. Next, I'm gonna show you Shirley's complete test as it was submitted 
so that you don't have to hear me talk through it. Before I go, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with somebody else you think it could help. Just post it to your social media too. I post videos every week that can help you with your skating, your fitness, nutrition, and ultimately live a better life. So remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. Hi, my name is Sho. Today, I will be testing my preliminary moves.
This is Amy. Thank you for watching. I will see you real soon. Happy skating. Bye.